Okay, we can uh, begin. It's 10 o'clock. Um, we can now call this meeting into order, this committee hearing uh, into order. Um, good, e uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, this is a public hearing by the Committee on Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Codes uh, and Laws, joint with the Committee on Public Services to tackle Senate Bill Number 1530. An Act amending Section 18, Book 7, Chapter 3 of the Administrative Code of the Philippines, uh, non-expiration of license or franchise. This uh, measure has been introduced by uh, Senator Franklin Drillon, our minority leader. We will proceed with the uh, this uh, representation's opening statement before we acknowledge the presence of our uh, distinguished colleagues in the Senate uh, who may also wish to give their opening statements and before we recognize uh, and acknowledge the presence of our resource persons. Um, again, good morning. Uh, when ABS-CBN went dark and silent on May 5 amidst the pandemic, uh, everyone felt its staggering effects. Among them, 43-year-old Fe Ripalde of Bacoor, Cavite. In an interview with the New York Times, she said she and her family have always relied on ABS-CBN for information on earthquakes and typhoons, floods, and political turmoil. And sabi niya, and I quote, Ngayon, di na namin alam ang nangyayari. Hindi na kami makapagpanood ng TV news sa Channel 2 para sabihin kung ano ang gagawin namin, she said. Today, the loss of jobs for the broadcast giants potential loss of 11,000 employees and thousands more of their suppliers is overwhelming enough. Uh, at this point, about 2.2 million workers have already lost their jobs because of the lockdown. Siyempre, maliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw, mas mahirap maghanap ng ibang trabaho sa ganitong sitwasyon. The Department of Labor and Employment has said that uh, in the coming months, anywhere between 5 to 7 million of our uh, kababayans will also be losing jobs. Namang dama ang pag-aala ng kanilang mga kapamilya, kamag-anak at kaibigan, lalong, lalo doon sa mga may batang anak at may karamdamang mga magulang. Sa mga negosyante, lokal man o, pam o dayuhan, sa mga namumuhunan at sa iba pang mga mamamahayag, nakakapangilabot din ang pag-shutdown sa pinakamalaking broadcast network ng bansa. But the impact of its shutdown on regular folk depend, depending only on the newscast available in, to them in the provinces is also concerning. Sa mga tweets, ito ang sinasabi ng ilang mga kababayan natin mula sa probinsya na mamoblema po tuloy ang parents ko sa Sorsogon kasi sa munisipyo po kami, malayo sa syudad, wala silang mapapanood. Nakakalungkot sa panahon po talaga ngayon na wala ang ABS-CBN. Isa ito sa pinagkukunan ng impormasyon sa isla namin. Kahit ito ang may malakas na, dahil ito ay may malakas na signal doon. Nangangapa kung ano-ano at kung gaano kalakas ang bagyo. Mabibigla na lang na humahagupit na. Malaking tulong sana kung napapabalita ngayon ng ABS-CBN. Sabi naman ng isa, may bagyo tapos ang ibas dito sa amin, channel 2 lang ang abot na signal. In a Rappler News article, UP Tacloban Mass Communication Instructor Marilu Morales points out that the shutdown creates an information void and worsens the already dire lack of independent news in Eastern Visayas. And, I, and she says, I quote, Today, not just in the time of pandemic, but also of fake news, we need more sources of credible information. The UP Tacloban Mass Com teacher said for communities, quote unquote, that cannot pick up any other channel but ABS-CBN, the government shutdown of ABS-CBN has blindsided them. She called the situation dangerous, adding that people might not know when the virus is already knocking on their doors. The reach of ABS-CBN was incomparable. Stations in 12 areas, including Northern Luzon, Southern Tagalog, Bicol, Palawan, Cebu, Panay, Negros, uh, and it has uh, several radio stations, both AM and FM. Today, we convene this joint meeting of the Committee on Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Codes and the Committee on Public Services to bring to fore a very relevant and timely bill. 
Senate Bill 1530, authored by Senator Frank Dillon, proposes to amend Section 18, Book 7, Chapter 3 of the Administrative Code of the Philippines to include franchises, stating that, quote, where a licensee or franchise has made timely and sufficient application for new renewal of a franchise or license, the same shall not expire until after finally determined uh, by the relevant department agency or branch of government, close of quote. The bill amends an existing provision under the revised administrative code to include franchises, and I quote, making it incumbent upon the issuing authority to act on an application and avoid situations where silence or inaction would effectively bar the operations of an enterprise, close of quote. In the recent past, networks were allowed to operate even beyond the effectivity of their franchises, networks and telcos, which were renewed several months or years later. To name a few, TV5 Networks Inc. franchise expired on December 2018, but the new franchise bill was signed on April 2019. The CBCP Network Franchise Catholic Bishop Conference of the Philippines expired in 2017. Its new franchise was approved two years later in 2019. Subic Broadcasting Corporation franchise expired in 2017. Its renewal was approved in 2018. Radio Marine Network Incorporated franchise validly lasted until 2018, and its new franchise was approved in 2019. Um, Smart Communications franchise lapsed on March 2017, but the new franchise was approved in April of 2017. Globe, uh, Fra Globe Innovates franchise expired in April 2017, while the new franchise was approved December 2018. We have invited resource persons, including legal luminaries and experts, to enlighten us on the possibility of approving this measure uh, as a critical tool on how, moving forward, this can help in the pursuit of the rule of law and democratic accountability. Sa sinapupunan ng katotohanan na bubuhay ang demokrasya at maging ang tamang mga polisiya tungkol sa mga nangyayari sa atin, kabilang nga ang pandemya, Sabi nga nung rival network ng ABS-CBN na GMA7, ang katotohanan ang magpapalaya sa bayan. Yun din ang katotohanan ang ating kaligtasan sa pandemya at sakuna. While we recognize that the grant of franchise is a discretionary power of Congress, it has also become a political power that only Congress can exercise, fortunately or unfortunately. Franchise applicants can't demand Congress to grant them franchise, the franchise because it is not a demandable right, but a privilege. Conversely, as franchises are imbued with public service, Congress has the responsibility to act and could not simply hide in the veil of silence or inaction by serving franchise holders a natural death. As we go along in our discussions, we hope we can answer the following questions. What are the legal obstacles, if any, of having this bill uh, pass into law? How can this bill help uh, avoid a situation that has happened uh, to the franchise giant, uh, ABS or to the uh, media giant, ABS-CBN, in the future? How will the government agencies be affected by the passage of this bill? These are only among the many questions that could arise from the discussions, and we hope this committee can uh, hearing can help enlighten the public. Magandang araw sa kanilang lahat. Um, we would like to place on record at this point uh, the names and members of the Senate Committee on Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Codes. Committee Chairperson, this representation, Vice Chairperson, Senator Lacson, of course our members, Senator Angara, Grace Poe, Manny Pacquiao, Gordon, Tolentino, uh, Go, Villar, and Nancy Binay, and for the minorities, uh, Senator Risa Ontiveros. We now recognize or acknowledge the presence of the following, our minority leader, uh, Senator uh, Rilon. We also have with us Senator Nancy Binay. Um, may we request, uh, uh, before we proceed with recognizing the resource persons, may we know if Senator Rilon has a opening uh, statement? Please proceed. You have the floor, Senator Just Rilon. Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. First of all, allow me to express my appreciation to your committee for 
uh, putting on the agenda, Senate Bill 1530, which we filed and which seeks to amend, as you mentioned, Section 18, Book 7, Chapter 3 of the Revised Administrative Code, which provides for the non-expiration of a license, where the licensee has made a timely application for renewal by extending its application to franchises granted by Congress. While it is recognized that a franchise license or certificate is not a privilege, this rule must be tempered with considerations of equity, fairness, due process, and equal protection, particularly when the service being provided has been so woven in everyday life that its abrupt cessation could give rise to devastating and unwelcome consequences. Whether we like it or not, entities are at the mercy of the licensing authorities. There is little choice left except to rely on the good faith that such powers will be exercised judiciously, not arbitrarily, capriciously, or oppressively against anyone. We have seen how well-meaning constitutional directives to Congress result not just in disruption of services, but also in the loss of livelihood of thousands of Filipinos. The Supreme Court, in the case of Associated Communications and Wireless Services versus NTC, has said that a prior congressional franchise on public utilities imposes additional burden and expenses on the part of the applicant. The criticism of the court that withstanding the bill does not propose to diminish the power of Congress to grant a legislative franchise. Let me repeat that, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, for, for emphasis. The bill does not promote, propose to diminish the power of Congress to grant legislative franchises. The amendment would really encourage the concerned agency or branch of government, including Congress, to act decisively on applications for renewal and to express its decision in clear, unmistakable terms ensuring that the applicant is not punished for the authority's indecision or inaction. The bill would fill the gap in cases where a franchise has expired while its renewal remains pending. Congress has applied considerations of equity in previous similar situations, and this measure seeks to institutionalize the practice. In our debates in the Senate, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Grace Poe has pointed out that indeed the practice in Congress is that the uh, franchise will continue to, in effect, be effective while the application is spending consideration by Congress on the grounds that equitably uh, the uh, applicant cannot control the pace in which Congress would consider a franchise. And therefore, the rule has always, the legislative practice has always been the, uh, 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 has always been that the franchise continues to be valid while Congress is in session and while the application for renewal is pending. Mr. Chairman, let me end by quoting a Holocaust survivor, Eli Weisel, when he said, quote, Ultimately, the only power to which man should aspire is that which he exercises over himself. While the legislative power of Congress is plenary, our ability to temper the use of those powers to serve the ends of justice will be a measure of our leadership. Congress will be judged by how it does or does not wield the power vested in it. Let this be our legacy, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, to the minority leader. Um, may we now uh, inquire if, se if Senator Nancy Binai has uh, a prepared opening statement? Is, is she... Um, Senator Binai, would, would you like to... Uh, 
gave an opening statement. Um, perhaps she, she stepped out. Uh, we can now proceed. Uh, may we request the committee secretary to um, uh, place on record who are our resource persons? And uh, may we also uh, be guided by the committee secretary as to the uh, sequence uh, of who are to be called first or who are to present uh, uh, first. Uh, please proceed uh, with the uh, acknowledgement of our resource persons and place them on record. Uh, go ahead, Attorney uh, Palines. Good morning. Um, for the resource persons today, Commissioner Gamapiel Cordeba from NTC, Attorney Gwen P. Enciso Kiampo from National Electrification Administration, Attorney Yusabia Kadlumboko from Maritime Industry Authority, Attorney Rhea Joy Morales Gonzalez, Civil Aeronautic Aeronautics Board, Attorney Christian Chano B. Minas Jr., MWSS. RO, Attorney Charles Cambaliza from the DOJ, former Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio, and Mr. Roberto S. Nickdow Jr. from the KDP. Um, okay, thank you. Yes. yes, sir. Sir, that would be the chronological order of the presentation for today's series. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Palines, our committee secretary. Uh, just a reminder to all our resource persons and all those uh, attending this hearing uh, online, please make sure that uh, your uh, mute button is on all the time unless you are uh, to speak uh, so that we do not get interference or uh, uh, so that the meeting will be uh, proceed uh, smoothly. Um, may we also appeal to borrow the term of our minority leader uh, said in men when he mentioned in a hearing the other day or, the, or last week uh, when uh, we ask you for the time please do not give us the history and the uh, of how a clock was invented. Uh, let's go straight to the point. Um, and so we proceed. Uh, we would like to now request for the position papers to be placed on record. Uh, may we call on the NTC uh, and attorney Cor uh, Cor Cordoba uh, to proceed with their position paper. You have the floor, attorney Cordoba. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Po, uh, to uh, uh, committee chair, uh, Senator Pangilinan, uh, Senator Dillon, and to other uh, Senator Nancy Binay, who is also present. Uh, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Uh, we, we agree po uh, with the proposed Senate bill of uh, Senator Drilon uh, on, this, uh, on the amendment of the Revised Administrative Code, uh, Book 7, Chapter 3, Section 18. Uh, malaking bagay po ito uh, para po ma-fix yung, mga, yung pong gap dun sa batas ano, para para po uh, kapag ka may pending matters ay ito po ay may consider na buhay pa. Uh, kasi po, meron po kasi tayong uh, uh, Act number 3846 stating that kailangan po ng franchise for it for uh, a public utility to operate. So with this uh, amendment uh, as proposed by Senator Dillon ay malaking bagay po ito to fix that uh, gap in the law. Thank you very much po. That is our... Uh, Statement, Your Honors. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, thank you very much, Attorney Cordoba. Uh, please do not forget to mute your mic uh, until you are called again to uh, give your inputs. Uh, who may we have the next uh, resource person, Attorney Seng? Who who is the next resource person? It would be Attorney Kiamko from the National Electrification Administration, sir. Okay, Attorney Kiamko, uh, please proceed. You have the floor. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Your Honors. 
as for the National Electrification Administration, uh, we fully support the passage of the bill, considering that some of the electric cooperatives um, franchises are already expiring in 10 years' time. However, Your Honor, uh, may we request that we submit the um, written comment on this bill uh, signed by the administrator. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, please submit the same to the committee secretariat. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for your inputs. And we have... Uh, we have uh, maybe maybe we have the list also so i can just have to i can just call them out uh, one by one who is next attorney sang it would be attorney boko from the marina sir okay attorney boko uh, of the marina you have the floor for your position paper good morning your honors marina interposes no objection to senate bill number 1530 we support the proposal of clarifying the legal effect of pending application for renewal of franchise, which for Marina pertains to certificate of public convenience issued to accredited ship owners, operators to engage in domestic shipping in accordance with RA 9295 or the Domestic Ship Development Act. At Marina, we observe the proactive approach of reminding ship owners, operators, on the eventual expiration of their CPC a year prior to expiration. Then if renewal of franchise is undoubtedly a, a business decision since the agency <coughs> in major roles to serve both passenger and cargo operations and uninterrupted inter-island transport. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Uh, uh, may we uh, may we uh, have the submissions also from uh, the marina? Sino uh, ang susunod? Yes, Your Honor, we will do that. Sir, um, the next to speak is Attorney Ray and Harry Morales Gonzalez from the Civil Aeronautics Board. We have the Civil Aeronautics Board, please. You may proceed. Yes, good morning, Your Honors. If I may just uh, quote from the comment that we submitted through the committee secretariat. So on behalf of the Civil Aeronautics Board, we fully support the bill authored by Senator Drillon and the intention of the bill to encourage the concerned agency to act decisively on an application in clear and unmistakable terms is in fact in harmony with the strict procedural observance of issuing a board resolution as the final act of the board in conveying an approval or a denial of an application. And until such uh, act transpires, the applicant for a certificate of public convenience and necessity in the meantime is given a provisional extension of its CPCN in order to avoid disruption of services. In other words, Your Honor, for the, for the CAB, in the event of a forthcoming expiration of a and we already allow the stakeholders or the applicants to have permits for... um what happened to is she still on on uh, we cannot hear you your uh, uh your mess your signal is not uh, clear can you repeat that the last uh, two minutes uh is she it looks like uh, her line got cut um okay we will go back to her uh, we can proceed with the department of justice uh, can you call? Uh, is she there? Yes, sir. Attorney Charles Cambalisa. Okay, Attorney Charles Cambalisa from the Department of Justice. Uh, you now have the floor. Uh, please proceed. Yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, good morning, dear honors. Uh, and I would like to thank, on behalf of the Department of Justice, our the committee for inviting us to give our comment on this matter. Uh, our comments are brief. And uh, it is that the franchising power of the legislative 
is an adjunct of its uh, legisl overall plenary legislative power and as such includes the authority to pass this law. As we, uh, as we will say in our possession paper that's for the, the review of, for, for the signature of the Secretary of Justice right now, uh, our point will be just that, that it's, it's connected to the, it's inextricably linked to the uh, Congress to pass laws. And as such, the Congress can pass this law. Uh, it's that simple. But uh, if, with the indulgence of the committee, we would like to uh, request permission for a few more days to submit our our official position paper. The uh, much more nuanced version of this, what I'm saying right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, please uh, forward your uh, written position paper uh, to the committee secretary. Uh, maraming salamat sa DOJ. Thank you. Uh, we now proceed with... Uh, uh, former Associate Justice uh, Antonio Carpio. Uh, magandang maga po, uh, Justice Carpio. Thank you for joining us. Uh, may we have your uh, inputs and insights on, on the pending measure uh, being tackled in this hearing. Please proceed, uh, Attorney uh, Justice Carpio. Is Justice Carpio? May we? I think the signal for Justice Carpio is not also good. Uh, maybe they will have to. Can we have the committee secretary and our technical staff uh, take a look at uh, how we can uh, correct this? In the meantime, I believe. Uh, we can move first to the KBP. Is that correct, At Attorney Seng? It's Mr. Nick Dow from the KBP. I am, um, sir. Yes. I think Justice yes, Scarpia's mic is turned off, sir. I see. Okay. Thank you, May sir. May we request before we go to KBP, uh, uh, Justice Scarpio, We are informed that your mic is muted. Can you unmute your mic, please? Uh, wala. Hindi pa rin. O, oh, sige. Uh, while they try to figure that out, we will proceed with uh, attorney, uh, Mr. June Nickdow of the uh, KBP. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, Your Honors. Uh, we submitted a uh, letter to uh, uh, the Minority <laughs> Fall Rhythm. And may, I, may I read the letter of support? We wish to express Please our speak. full support. Hello? We wish Go ahead. Express, Go ahead. Yes. We wish to express our full support to Senate Bill Number 1530, which, you, which uh, the Minority Fall Floor Leader filed last week at the Senate. This bill addresses the unfortunate situation we're in renewal for franchise applications are filed before expiration but are not acted upon in time. During the Senate hearing conducted last March 10, 2020, the Secretary of Justice opined that under the principle of equity, in the absence of a definitive law governing such instances, the NTC should be allowed to issue a provisional authority while the applications are being held by Congress. In the same hearing, uh, the minority floor leader pointed out that the sword of the mock list still hangs over the heads of franchise applicants because there is no clear legislation regarding this. In many instances, applicants for franchise renewal face the possibility of a shutdown of operations through no fault of theirs and at the expense of continuity of public service. The shutdown by NTC of ABS-CBN confirms your assessment. We pray that, your, that the bill is acted upon expeditiously. Thank you very much. Okay, maraming salamat, uh, June uh, Nick Dow from the KBP. Uh, we would appreciate the submission of a written... Oh, the letter was sent to Senator Drillon. If the committee can also have a copy of that letter. Yes, sir. Uh, we, will, we will forward it to the committee, sir. Thank you. Thank you, June. Uh, may we have now uh, Justice Carpio? Uh, has he been able to figure out the technical difficulties? Justice Carpio? 
unfortunately we are we are still unable to get his uh, uh, inputs through online uh, okay so there. can you hear me now yes 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 uh, magandang umaga po justice thank you for joining us you have the floor to present your inputs and insights on the pending measure please proceed uh, justice Carter. thank you your honors for inviting me here this morning uh, on your online I support the enactment into law of Senate Bill number 1530 introduced by Senator Dillon on the ground that it will remove the unequal protection of the law that currently exists in the renewal of franchises by Congress. As the chairperson has just narrated, in the past, uh, all franchisees uh, with pending franchises for renewal with Congress have been allowed to continue operating even if their franchises have expired in the meantime. But the only exception appears to be a BCBN. And I think this violates the equal protection of the law under uh, Section 1, Article 3 of the Constitution. So I support the enactment of this bill. I wish, however, to respectfully propose for purposes of clarity that the phrase, and I quote, administrative or legislative, end of quote, be inserted before the phrase licensee or franchisee. The reason is that there are administrative licenses and administrative franchises issued by the executive branch. Although the phrase branch of government would imply to include franchises issued by Congress, it would be better to remove any doubt and clarify that legislative franchises are included. That's uh, my proposal. So those are my only comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marami Salamat, Justice Scarpio, for your inputs. Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think all our resource persons uh, have uh, have no objections uh, to the uh, proposed measure. Um, may we now request or Inquire, Senator Drillon, uh, you may have some questions. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I am glad that all our resource persons of exception has expressed support for this measure. Indeed, as pointed out by the Secretary of Justice himself, who appeared uh, before the Senate, said that there is a gap in the law and therefore uh, equity would uh, dictate that the franchise of ABS-CBN should be, should, should be allowed to be effective. But having said that, uh, we have proposed this amendment uh, to uh, the revised administrative code. Uh, in fairness, this idea was uh, first broached by uh, uh, Justice Antonio Carpio who is uh, keeping uh, himself informed of uh, this issue. But uh, may we know from our resource persons is, uh, are they currently applying uh, the uh, provision of, of the revised administrative code, which, uh, which uh, expressly provides for the non uh, expiration of a license over an activity of a continuing nature until there is a final determination by that agency. That is what the present administrative code provides, and this bill would, would extend that, uh, that, that uh, situation to cases of franchises before Congress. But presently, the revised administrative code already provides for that. May we know? Uh, if the regulatory agencies present here, uh, how do they apply this particular provision? Uh, anyone, anyone can answer, but maybe we we'll start with the NTC, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you need your permission. Yes, uh, Attorney Cordoba, you may please respond to the uh, question raised by the minority leader. Uh, yes, uh, Your Honors, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, currently, Paul, what we are doing is we are applying it. Um, Except uh, in the case, uh, in this case, kung kailan po, kailangan po ng congressional franchise. If there is a need for a congressional franchise, then this law 
this proposed amendment would be the one to uh, cure that uh, defect. Po. Ngayon po, on all other uh, administrative matters, I, we apply this. Po. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead, go ahead, Senator Dillon. In other words, Mr. Chairman, in cases where uh, there is no congressional franchise necessary, <coughs> this bill, uh, the, this present provision, uh, Section 18, Chapter 3.7 of the Revised Administrative Code, is utilized to extend, in effect, the license. Is that correct, sir? Uh, may, I, may I answer, Paul? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yes, that is correct, uh, Your Honor. No, but um, j just to test your theory, isn't a license also a, a power delegated by Congress to the administrative agency? Uh, is it, isn't that a power of Congress which it exercises through the administrative agency, through a delegation of uh, the legislative authority? So may we know why you would uh, make that distinction uh, in, your, in your agency? Um, Your Honours, yun po kasing uh, yun po kasing batas ay uh, uh, our our uh, power to issue uh, those administrative uh, licenses is based on the uh, law existing yung pong franchise. So uh, based on the uh, Act Number three eight four six, nakalagay po kasi dito that if there is no no uh, franchise, then we cannot. Uh, uh that the operations of uh public utility in this case a radio broadcast station ay hindi po namin siya may pagpatuloy um act number 3846 provides um no person firm company association or corporation shall construct install establish or operate a radio transmitting station or a radio receiving station used for commercial purposes or a radio broadcasting station Without having first obtained a franchise, therefore, from the Congress of the Philippines, Your Honor. Um, how do you reconcile that, uh, Mr. Commissioner, with the present provision of the Revised Administrative Code, which we just cited, that yes. Yes. Uh, you know that allows the continued operation of these licenses pending um, final determination by the agency? Um, kasi po, Your Honor, dito po kasi sa, as, as presently worded, uh, Section 18, Book 7, Chapter 3 provides where the license has made timely and sufficient application for the renewal of a license. With reference to any activity of a continuing nature, the existing license shall not expire until the application shall have been finally determined by the agency. Um, if we read this, Your Honors, I think this would be referring to a license only that is uh, uh, issued by a uh, executive uh, the, uh, agency of the government. Kaya po ginamit ang word na agency. Kung nakalagay po sana, Your Honors, as you have proposed right now, that it is uh, it includes the franchise or the license, then ano po, then uh, yun po ang magiging effect sana. Kung as worded ngayon po yung law, as you have proposed, ay ganun na po ang situation. Uh, but if you would read it, in its original version, I nakalagay po is license only and agency. Not includes the, that does not include the legislative department and uh, franchises no. issued by the legislative department, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, um, we would like to hear the view of, uh, of Justice Antonio Carpio on this please, specific please. issue. Please proceed. Go ahead, uh, Justice Carpio. You may respond. Uh, I think you're again mute. Uh, your mic is muted. Uh, yeah. okay. Can you go? go ahead. Go ahead. It appears to me that the Section 18, as presently worded, would refer only to administrative licenses and franchises because uh, mm -hmm. the executive branch also issue uh, franchises like the franchise of the LTFRB. So, uh, and because it's the uh, administrative code, it uh, refers to uh, administrative matters, unless we put the phrase notwithstanding any provision of law, which is 
in the proposed bill of Senator Villon. So I think uh, the NPC chair has a basis for saying that uh, under Section 18, uh, the section refers only to administrative licenses and franchises. Thank you, uh, Senator Delon. Um, again, a general question. Um, the, to the uh, outdoor resource persons, can, can you share with the committee the procedure that your agency follows when a license is about to expire? Uh, in what instances uh, do you do you, do you, what, do you do you foresee having to resort to, uh, uh, an, to an abrupt termination of the license to operate, or uh, does it occur at all? In other words, when the license is about to operate because of the provision of the revised administrative code, it is just automatically extended. Is that how you implement this? Can we ask? That? For example, the KBBP, um, what is their experience on this? And this, uh, yes, the KBP. Yes, uh, may we have uh, uh, June uh, Nikdao of the KBP? What is the experience of your members? Uh, when it comes? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the experience of our members is that uh, um, in, in one of the me uh, hearings in, in Congress, in fact, this, this particular question was asked, and uh, the uh, to uh, the deputy commissioner of the NTC, and the response then was that unless uh, uh, if a mem if uh, an applicant already has filed uh, their uh, uh, application for renewal of franchise, and unless Congress tells them to uh, stop the operation of the uh, of the said uh, applicant, they will allow to continue. Uh, they, they will allow the applicant to continue to operate in the meantime. That was uh, the experience of uh, a number of our uh, of our members, uh, Mr. Chair. When you say, with, with the permission of Not, Senator, uh, when please. you say a number of your members, uh, uh, would you say a significant number uh, as a whole? If if I may, uh, in my recollection, there will be about probably uh, between five to ten uh, of our members that had. Uh, Either expiring or expired franchise by the time they uh, got their renewal of franchise, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, the Senator Dillon. No, we, we are referring particularly, Mr. Chairman, to how the uh, uh, regulatory agency, in this case the NTC, would handle or would proceed or would decide on matters which uh, were in uh, the uh, license or the franchise expired. Uh, that is why we are referring to, we have asked the KBP, because these, uh, uh, these radio stations also needed, also need a congressional franchise to operate. And that is why we're asking for the experience of the KBP. And from what we can gather, uh, is the KBP saying that the experience of their members is that the license uh, is uh, renewed automatically where the franchise application, which has expired, is pending in Congress. Is that what we get from the KDP? Not, go ahead. Not, not ex uh, Mr. Chair, if I can answer. Go ahead, go ahead. That's yes. not exactly the, uh, the, the tenor of, the, uh, of what we experienced, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's not an automatic renewal of the franchise, but it's uh, uh, the NTC at that time uh, uh, allowed the, the members or, or, or the uh, franchise applicant who has an exp uh, expiring franchise to continue to operate its networks or its stations uh, while its application is pending. In Congress. Uh, in Congress. It's pending in Congress. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. So, the, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, the Senator Villa. Uh, may we have the comment of the um, NTC on this uh, issue, uh, specifically on uh, the statement of KBP that insofar as the radio stations or members of the KBP are concerned, they have experienced instances where while their, uh, while their franchise application is pending before Congress, the NTC allowed them 
or either allow them to continue to operate or grant to them a temporary license. Can we confirm that from the NTC Commission of Cordoba? <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, yes, your honors. Uh, we, 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 we never issued a provisional license to uh, any uh, to any uh, broadcaster while their franchise uh, uh, was pending in uh, Congress, your honors. What happened then was uh, uh, we, we what happened was we just allowed them to continue operating, and the difference at, at, from those uh, instances and uh, on the ABS-CBN issue is that in ABS-CBN. A um, uh, case for co warrant was actually filed by the uh, Office of the Solicitor General. Kaya po, uh, medyo naging uh, untenable on our part uh, to let it continue because uh, of the clear uh, clear uh, uh, letter of the law uh, in uh, Republic Act 3846 and as uh, interpreted and uh, decided by the Supreme Court in the ACWS case, Your Honor. Yeah. Were there other instances in the past where you acted uh, um, differently from the way you acted in so far as ABS-CBN is concerned? Meaning, uh, were there instances in the past where under the same set of facts you allowed the franchise holder to continue operating? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Yun pong uh, nabanggit ng mga uh, broadcasters ni uh, Senator Pangilinan uh, earlier, Your Honor. Uh, in those instances, you allowed the uh, uh, broadcast companies to continue uh, operating pending uh, consideration of the franchise application with Congress. Uh, yes, Your Honors. We did not issue any provincial authority. Uh, we just uh, let them continue operation, operating, Your Honors. You did not issue a cease and desist order? No, 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 no Your Honor. Okay. Uh, just curious, where you find violation of the terms of a franchise or licensee? What violation of any laws? What is the procedure you follow? Uh, is it, uh, do you automatically issue or do you issue a cease and desist order where uh, you, you, what is the, where you find a violation of the law? Um, actually, Your Honors, uh, based on the uh, rules of practice and procedure before the NTC, um, we can uh, issue motu proprio uh, cease and desist order, Your Honor, if there is no um, if there is no license or uh, franchise, uh, if uh, if a uh, if a radio station or a broadcast station is operating illegally without any permit, Your Honors. I'm sorry. Uh, you did it. Can you repeat, uh, sir? I... Uh, yeah. Uh, based on the 2006 rules of practice and procedure before the NTC, um, we are allowed to issue cease and desist orders, Your Honor, if there is no, um, uh, if um, if the respondent does not have any authority from the commission to install, operate, and maintain the service facility upon motion or motu proprio, issue a cease and desist order to a respondent, Your Honor. Uh, were there instances in the past where you issued a cease and desist order under the circumstances that you mentioned? Uh, yes, Your Honors. Uh, we have already issued that, Your Honors, because uh, sometimes during, uh, 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 especially during elections, there are illegal stations that uh, uh, crop up. Uh, they, they start uh, broadcasting. So what we do is uh, we... Uh, we issue cease and desist orders right away, Your Honor, During... to stop their illegal operation because they don't have any franchise and no permit from the government, Your Honor. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll give an opportunity to other members of the committee to ask questions, or if you have any questions, I'll give, uh, I will uh, defer in the meantime. Um, yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Dillon, uh, the Minority Leader. Um, well, just a clarification on NTC. Uh, uh, the cease and desist, desist order. Uh, may we may we know when was this issued? Uh, not the ABS-CBN uh, cease and desist order, but the, the one about the elections. Uh, um, yes, sir, just, just, can, yeah. yes. 
uh, uh, we can we can submit uh, samples of those uh, cease and desist orders that we issued, Your Honors. Yes, but uh, offhand, yes, please have them submitted. But offhand, do you yes. recall uh, the most recent one? I think, Your Honors, during the 2000, uh, uh, 2019 elections, we issued the uh, uh, cease and desist orders, Your Honors, because most of these illegal stations uh, crop up and start operating without any franchise or license during election. Makakapag-submit po kami, Your Honors. Um, we can, you can give us until the maybe tomorrow yes, or the yes. day after tomorrow, Your Honors. Madami po yun. Yes, thank you. And just to clarify further, uh, because you mentioned uh, that we identified earlier during our opening statement a number of instances wherein uh, the franchise had lapsed, uh, but they were allowed to operate. Uh, uh, in these instances also, uh, there was no franchise, uh, uh, and yet there was also no... You could have issued a cease and desist order, but did not. Yes, Is that, Okay. We, we, okay, uh, we will you. also submit that for Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, I have I have no other questions, Senator Villon. Is Senator Binay still uh, uh, around to ask questions? Uh, and, well, if there are no other questions, uh, uh, maybe we can now uh, terminate this uh, hearing, uh, Senator Villon, unless you have uh, additional uh, questions you might want to raise. No, I have no additional yes, questions, sir. I just note that all resource persons invited with various agencies uh, see the need uh, to amend uh, the uh, provisions of the revised administrative code uh, given give the events that have transpired in the last six months. Um, in the case of ABS-CBN, as the Justice Secretary himself said, there is a gap in the law and therefore this, uh, this measure is intended to uh, to address that gap, uh, but for the record, uh, this representation sees the very clear inconsistency in the manner in which NTC has applied this power of, uh, of the, or the authority to issue a cease and desist order. Um, there was no cease and desist order issued uh, to various uh, franchises which expired while the application is pending in Congress. But uh, the, the commissioner notes instances where uh, radio stations which were operating without the franchise during election time, particularly, were were, were issued uh, cease and desist orders. That power was was exercised then. So at the very least, uh, it appears that there was uh, an inconsistency in the exercise of this power, which gave uh, rise to allegations of. Uh, an equal protection of the law. But having said that, Mr. President, this is precisely a remedial legislation that we have introduced so that this kind of a, uh, of a gap can be addressed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to uh, the minority leader. And uh, with that, we would like to thank our resource persons. Mr. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yeah. please proceed. Um, yes, uh, let's check, Secretary. Uh, Mr. Chair, we still have resource persons from the MWSSRO and PPA. Uh, we recognize them that they're here in the hearing, sir. They will deliver. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I was. Uh, sorry, I apologize. I was given a list, uh, uh, and they were they only mentioned two others, so maybe. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. And I apologize for the oversight. Please uh, proceed. You have the floor. May we have the MWSS and your position paper on the measure? Uh, Senate Bill 1530, please proceed, uh, MWSS. Can you hear us? And the time are in a Please go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, so Dr. Dillon. We're asking for MWSS to give this comment. Can Can I revert back to Justice uh, Arpio? Can Can we have your 
valued opinion uh, on exactly where we are today, given the uh, um, even the statements of the NTC uh, vis a vis the issuance or non issuance of a cease and desist order. Would you care to make any further comment, Mr. Justice? Uh, yes, thank you, Senator John. I think uh, it's clear that there is unequal protection of the law. There is discrimination. And I think uh, this bill will correct that. And I think uh, we should enact this bill uh, as soon as possible because uh, this is a very, uh, uh, very uh, destructive uh, ramification on we have uh, 11,000 people out of job. And uh, people will not be able to receive news or information. So I think uh, I, uh, I suggest that uh, the Senate proceed with the, not with the approval of this bill. One question, uh, Justice Carter. Assuming that this bill is approved and signed, so for the record, will this, will this be Assuming that the law uh, provides for an effectivity clause upon publication in a newspaper of general circulation, uh, it will have the effect of automatically uh, uh, allowing ABS-CBN to operate again because the license is in effect uh, deemed extended until acted upon by Congress. Can we share uh, your view? Yes, uh, I share that view, Senator, because the uh, ABS CPN would fall under the uh, provision of the law because it has timely made and uh, timely and sufficiently filed a renewal of its franchise, and the franchise expired without uh, Congress giving a formal notice of approval or, or disapproval. So, from my point of view, it would the case of ABS CPN would fall. But if you want to play safe, uh, you can put there a retroactivity clause to make sure that there will be no question anymore. Thank you. What do you mean retroactivity clause, uh, Mr. Justice? What exactly? Uh, can, uh, the, the bill, uh, the, the effectivity clause will say that uh, this, uh, the law shall take shall retroact to January 1, 2020. So it covers all those franchises that have expired prior to the effectivity of this law. To the NTC Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Cordoba, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you would please, uh, given this opinion of uh, Justice Carpio, uh, what is exactly the status of the uh, move to revoke the uh, frequency or to re get back the frequency assigned to ABS-CBN. Um, oh, yes. Yes, Car yes. Okay. can we hear from uh, Commissioner Cordova? Uh, yes, yes, Your Honours. Uh, right now, um, uh, uh, ABS-CBN has already submitted their answer. So uh, the matter is still pending in our office. I think we'll, we'll have to go through uh, uh, the process of having a hearing uh, for that purpose, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, given the fact that uh, the opinion of Justice Carpio is that this uh, bill can be given a retroactive effect, is there any basis for a uh, exercise of your discretion to withhold further hearings on this revocation of the frequency? Given the fact that if this law becomes effective, then uh, any issue on the frequency becomes academic, uh, uh, Mr. Commissioner? Uh, yes, Your Honours. Uh, we will study that uh, possibility, Your Honours, and we will also, uh, uh, we'll also consult with our lawyers, Your Honours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because anyway, in any case, what I'm saying is, I'm saying is uh, if this uh, bill becomes law and it is uh, applicable to ABC, the proceedings for the, the frequency will Academic. Yes, Commissioner uh, Cordova. In other words, once this law becomes, once this bill becomes law, 
any uh, process to revoke would be rendered academic. That, yes. Uh, uh, we will uh, we will study that your honor. Uh, thank you for for that. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, Yes, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Minority Leader. Uh, just, uh, just to reiterate the request for the uh, submission of the cases wherein cease and desist orders were issued by the NTC, because uh, if I recall a previous statement by your Deputy Commissioner, um, he said, uh, if I may, that there has been no instance in the past that a cease and desist order was uh, issued by the by the NTC. So we'd like to see uh, uh, why is there a there seems to be a conflict. No, so please make that submission, uh, uh, Attorney Cordoba. Uh, the uh, representative from MWSS uh, has uh, informed us that he is unable to unmute his uh, mic, and therefore, but he he has uh, placed on record. We would like to place on record that they will make their written submissions. They will uh, uh, submit uh, their position paper. Maraming salamat. We also have with us from the Philippine Ports Authority, uh, who will speak uh, and give their position paper on the on the pending measure. Is it Attorney De Los Santos or Attorney Kaabay of the PPA? Attorney, Attorney Kaabay from PPA. Yes, please proceed, Attorney Kaabay, for your for your uh, inputs and position paper. Go ahead, Attorney Kaabay. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, we can hear you, Attorney Kaabay. Go ahead. You have the floor. Thank you for joining us. You are now. I think you you have muted your mic. Okay. For Philippine Ports Authority, we join the sentiment of the majority uh, for the approval of the proposed uh, amendment. And uh, for our position paper, may we be given at least uh, a period of three days to submit uh, the same, Your Honor? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, for the record, uh, you are in support of the said measure as well. Yes, Your Honor. For a written uh, explanation and your submission and your position paper to be uh, submitted later. Thank you, thank you, uh, Attorney Kaabay, uh, Attorney Seng, our Comsec. Any other, any other uh, resource persons? All the resource persons have already delivered their position paper, sir. Okay, and uh, may we remind them uh, uh, and request them to submit. Uh, in writing their position papers uh, for the committee's uh, perusal and uh, consideration. Uh, Senator Drillon, uh, do you still have any other uh, issues you wish to raise as, as author, principal author of the measure? Uh, no more, uh, Mr. Chairman. We just like to thank our resource persons and uh, the NPC and Justice Tony Carpio and the other resource persons uh, for giving us time today. Uh, uh, we, would uh, we would request that uh, the position papers be submitted to the committee for the record. Uh, those who have not yet submitted uh, in writing, uh, if they can submit it to the committee so that this will be part of the record when we report out the measure to the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the resource persons. Mr. Chairman, we lost you. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Committee Secretary, Madam Secretary, who is chairman? Uh, yes, sir, we're trying to get hold of uh, our chairman. We have some, we have a, we're having some technical difficulties with his connection, sir. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Drillon, our minority leader, and to our resource persons. Uh, Okay. So we move to adjourn the meeting, the hearing, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> What happened? <clears throat> okay, Tony. You can. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. See you. See you, Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Marami salamat po. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Go, sir. Uh, Yes, uh, I apologize for the glitch. Uh, it looks like uh, there was a problem with the signal. Uh, again, we would like to thank all those who attended this hearing. Uh, with that, uh, we will now uh, proceed with the termination of uh, the committee hearing of the constitutional amendment hereby adjourned. Uh, thank you very much.